President Obama's endorsement of Hillary Clinton, a key element in the Democratic Party's move towards unity. And tonight, those united and newly energized Democrats are taking aim right at Donald Trump. Here to discuss is Guy Cecil. He is a co-chair and chief strategist of Priorities USA, a super PAC that supports Hillary Clinton. And Eli Stokels is a national politics reporter for Politico. Dennis Prager is here, nationally syndicated talk show host and CNN political commentator Kaylee McEnany, who is a Trump supporter. Hello to all of you. Dennis first. I want you to take off your partisan hat, just put it down, just for like the next 30 seconds or so, however long it takes you to answer this question, and then you can put it right back on. So who would you rather be right now in this campaign? The candidate who has secured the nomination and has the party uh, unifying behind her, or the candidate who has to convince his party to stop condemning him publicly? Which, who would you rather be? Well, it's not even a matter of removing my partisan hat. It's just a matter of being intellectually honest, which I, which I hope to be all the time, no matter what my partisanship. It's obvious that the, uh, the advantage at this moment goes to the one who is representing a unified party. Yeah, and that is for now, because any, it, things change every uh, yes, moment Yes, exactly, and, and it was predictable. Uh, mm -hmm. who, who would assume that the Democrats would not unite uh, behind uh, Hillary Clinton? I, I just want to add one thing, because I know we have a lot of people to speak, and sure. I appreciate that fact. I just want to add this, though, and this, this to me is key. There is a lot of angst, including my own, even though, at, as of this moment, I will still vote for Donald Trump, because I have no choice. Uh, I did not support him at all for the nomination, but I have no choice. Well, you do have but a choice. there is tremendous angst amongst conservatives and Republicans with regard to his character. Why is there no angst among Democrats with regard to Hillary Clinton's character? Doesn't that tell you something about the character of Democrats versus Republicans? I do think that there are some people who have angst about Hillary Clinton. If you look at most of the Bernie Sanders supporters, they have a lot of angst about, about her positions, yeah. not her character. And about, and about her character. They're, you know, they, they say the same things basically that Republicans are, are saying about Hillary Clinton. But I mean, I, I, I appreciate you're the perfect guest because you realize there are other people, but I have, to, I have to stay with you. What do you mean you don't have a choice? There's free will. This is America. You, can, you don't have to vote for <laughs> Donald Trump. Yes, I understand. My, my lack of choice is that I have before me uh, uh, four more years of the left uh, hurting my country, which I believe it has been doing. Look at the universities where the left is in control and the utter deterioration of freedom, liberty, The lesser of two uh, evils. And, and is that tolerance. what you're saying? I'm sorry? You're saying the lesser of two evils. Is that what you're... That's right. That's okay. exactly All what right. I'm saying. All right. So, Eli, listen, progressive icon uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, I'm sure you saw, do we, you know, he, she gets under Donald Trump's skin. She isn't holding back tonight. In case you didn't see it, look at part of it. Trump is picking on someone who is ethically bound not to defend himself. Exactly what you would expect from a thin-skinned racist bully. Donald Trump is a loud, nasty, thin-skinned fraud who has never risked anything for anyone and who serves no one but himself. And we will not allow a small, insecure, thin-skinned, wannabe tyrant or his allies in the Senate to destroy the rule of law in the United States of America. The, uh, Eli, this is a provocation and to, right, uh, to him for a more damaging response. That, is that what she wants? Well, I think so. I mean, he's, you know, she's a ferocious attack dog, and he's always said, uh, I'm a counterpuncher. I never hit first. But, you know, she's doing this at a time when Donald Trump has really been chastened after all the comments about the judge over the past 10 days or so. He's finally gotten the message from the party. Uh, they put him on a much tighter leash. We saw his teleprompter speech the other night. He said he's not going to talk about the judge anymore. Just when he's trying to get on message, she's trying to get him off. She's really trying to goad him into responding and uh, responding uh, in a very Trump-like way because he, uh, she gave him a lot of material and, and really went at him pretty hard. Did somebody tie his fingers up, Kaylee? Because he is not tweeted. He didn't. At all. I think Eli has a very interesting argument. I think that makes a lot of sense that she's probably trying to goad him. But, you know, I, I want to say stylistically, I thought Joe Biden was much more effective. He was very calm, he was very even keel in his criticism. I don't agree with his criticism, obviously, as a Donald Trump supporter, but I don't think. Uh, haphazardly throwing around the term racist is probably the best way to attack Donald Trump. In fact, I think that probably drives a lot of people to Donald Trump uh, thinking that, you know, when you throw ar around such a serious accusation, you kind of lose a lot of credibility. How I is she different, though, than members of his own party who are saying the same thing, basically? Well, you know, I, I thought that Paul Ryan went over the top by, by calling it a racist statement. I don't think that that was ever Donald Trump's intent. I think that that was completely out of bounds for him to say that. So, I mean, I disagree with him there. But outside of him, 
I don't think there are many people calling Trump that label. That's a very serious accusation let me, to throw around very loosely. Let me ask the members of the panel, because you don't think it was a racist statement, right, obviously? I don't think he should have brought up his heritage, but no. do you think the statement but was racist? No, I think to be okay. a racist statement, it needs intent, and I don't think that I'm was I'm going to ask everyone there if you can just answer. Dennis, do you think it was racist? The, uh, the Democrats call every single Republican racist. But I mean, do you so think his comment has, about it, it, the, his comments on yeah, the judge? Yeah, I can. I just, I, that's important to say that, though. It's the sort of the broken clock theory. If he meant no Mexican heritage judge can rule fairly, then it's racist. Is that what he meant? That's the question Kaylee is asking. If that's what he meant, of course it's racist. I don't think anybody in this room or in your room uh, believes that he thinks that no Mexican heritage judge can rule properly. It sounded like that's what he said. No, Eli? Well, I think, you know, a majority of Republicans have come out and said that sounded pretty racist to me. And I think you have to remember that this comment is being viewed in the context of all the other comments that he's made over a year now since he's been a presidential candidate. Uh, so I think that, you know, Chris Christie may come out and say, oh, he's not racist. But I think a majority of the Republicans uh, who have been asked about this uh, haven't had very good answers on it. Yeah, what do you think? Hang on, Guy. Well, I, I look. I don't really need to speak very much on this panel because any day that we're debating how racist Donald Trump is is going to be a good day for Democrats. So you this think his comments about, were racist? Of, of course. Yeah. Look, I think the vice president was right on. I mean, the idea that this guy has been calling Mexican Americans murderers and rapists, he's been talking about banning Muslims. This goes all the way back to his arguments on the Central Park Five. To th this was not just a singular mistake. He didn't just misspeak. He gave a 12-minute diatribe about how this judge was disqualified because, in his words, he was Mexican. So the thing I love about Republicans is their argument is Donald Trump needs to act better. He needs to act more presidential. He needs to give better speeches. This is not about how Donald Trump acts. This is about what Donald Trump believes, and he does not have the character or the temperament to be our president. All right. Stick around, everyone. We're going to continue this conversation. We'll be right back. And we're back. We're talking about the Republicans' family feud. Not over yet. Can Donald Trump get the party's leaders on his side? Back with me now, Guy Cecil, Eli Stokels, uh, also Dennis Prager, and Kaylee McEnany. So thank you very much. We're having a fascinating conversation on the other side. So uh, in that vein, Eli, let's talk about the House Speaker, uh, Paul Ryan. He gave an interview to our affiliate, WKOW. And I have to tell you, at first, you know, when you first listened to it, it really didn't have any positive, he didn't have any positive things to say about his party's nominee. Listen. That we have a far better chance of putting these better way ideas in place uh, with a Trump presidency than we would with a Hillary Clinton presidency. Do you worry at all that people are going to hear that through the next few weeks and think, well, Getting your agenda passed into law is more important to you than, uh, you know, how our nation looks, how our president acts over the next four yeah. years. No, that's a legitimate question. I think that's why I think uh, that's why I condemn his his comments as as clearly as I can. And I've spoken to him about it. I've spoken to him about other issues that and, and things he said in the past. And I think this has to change. This he has to fix this. Mm. So earlier, Kaylee said she, you know, she was disappointed in in Paul Ryan what he said about the, you know, Trump's response to the judge. A month ago, Eli, it looked like Trump was consolidating his party support. Everyone was like, wow, they're coalescing around Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton was struggling just to get through her primary. She couldn't put Bernie, you know, to the side. And then you fast forward, the tables have now turned. So what's your sense of where the GOP is heading into this convention? Where will well, they be? I think Paul Ryan's frustration that you saw in that clip really encapsulates where a lot of members of the party are right now because, you know, they wanted to give this a shot, to unify, to come on board, to give Donald Trump a chance to really carry their message and do so and carry a credible message against Hillary Clinton. And really for the past two weeks, he hasn't done that. This is a self-inflicted wound with him talking about this judge and his heritage and talking about this case that really has no relevance to the election and to the American people. It just has relevance to Donald Trump. And so party leaders are really frustrated. Ryan's previous had to call Donald Trump this week and say, would you please knock it off? Would you please stop talking about this? Start talking about Hillary Clinton. He's going to give a speech about Hillary Clinton on Monday, we hear. But, you know, 
That will be almost two weeks after her speech uh, laying out the case against him, saying why he's unfit to be commander in chief. That is not exactly a rapid response from the Trump campaign. He's been very agile and savvy in terms of his use of uh, social media and manipulating and using earned media in general up to this point. But the general election is very different. The audience is very different. And this is really a bare bones campaign that does not have much of a communications operation. Uh, and that's hurt them over the last couple of weeks. So here's a question, right, uh, Guy? Because, in, you know, um, and there was a political piece where, let's see, this is for, for Eli, Eli, for you. Your political piece, you, you talked about this, that it took two weeks uh, to respond, or at, at least a week or longer. How quickly must one respond to the Clinton machine like this? Is, did he really take too long? Shouldn't you be able to respond right away? Well, he, he, you know, he tweeted right away, but and sometimes that's sufficient and sometimes it's not. I mean, this year, this cycle has totally rewritten the rules for, you know, campaign communications. All yeah. I'm saying is there's not a robust uh, and experienced communications team inside Trump Tower. This is sort of all happening inside Donald Trump's head. Dennis. And, you know, there have been efforts to bring in more people and to build this out. And a lot of people haven't been hired because of the infighting that's taken place in the campaign. You know, the two principals running this thing don't trust each other. And is that has really impeded hiring. Dennis, did he, is he taking too long to respond to that speech? It was a scathing speech. Uh, I don't know whether he's taking too long or not, I, because there's a there's a bigger issue I'd I'd like to address since you're having me on. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, and that is uh, and that is this: Why is there never any discussion uh, on on networks and in the mainstream media about left wing racism? There is so much more left-wing racism than conservative racism that the, the ratio is like 100 to 1. When students at Yale and, and agreed to by the administration of Yale are going to drop their major introduction to a poetry course because the poets are all white males. Why isn't that unbelievable Dennis, can racism? I stop you right there? You yeah. need to watch this show, show more often because we tackle those issues all the time on this then program. Then bless you. Then we, you know we what? Just been, you... We've been dealing with this political season with Donald Trump because he has been such a juggernaut and with Hillary Clinton and all what's right, going then on let me ask Bernie my, Sanders. Then, okay, but you're, we have you're those exonerated. discussions all Don, the time on this program. Ble no, I bless you, and I mean that sincerely. So I'll ask my, my, my liberal colleagues here on, on the panel. Do you think it's racist to lower academic standards to admit blacks? Is that a racist statement of black ineptitude on the part of liberals or not? I will let you answer, but I don't want to get too far afield on what we're actually discussing. But go ahead. Who wants to tell? Anyone want to answer that? Well, I would just answer by saying this. Uh, the Republican panelists did not want to answer the question about whether Donald Trump was saying racist things or was a racist. They said, well, I don't know what's in his heart. I'm not sure if what, he, what the intent behind it was. But when it comes to attacking others, they seem pretty clear about their point of view. And this is exactly my point. This is the Republican strategy for this election cycle. All right, so you this bring question up something wasn't answered. About, you for bring the record, up something, you bring there's up no something answer. About, you, let him finish, Dennis, something and then I'll let you Donald respond. Trump. You bring up something about Donald Trump, and their response is, well, he just needs to act better. He just needs to do better. He, I'm not sure what's in his heart. Um, emails, Benghazi, this is their response. The fact of the matter is... Donald Trump has had a career building his business and his campaign by tearing people down, by examining all sorts of racist attacks on people, and by leveling these charges. Okay. And there's no well, response because there the is response, response is they know it's true. But we no, they know it's true. true. But that's here's the true. thing, though. Before, I want to tell everyone here, but here is the thing. The entire Democratic Party is not running for president, or, or liberals, as Dennis puts it. Donald Trump is running for president of the United States. Yes. And so he is going to be examined. His words, his actions, mm -hmm. everything he says is going to be examined. And the correct response, I, you know, Dennis, I love you with all due respect, is not, okay, well, we're terrible, but look how terrible they are. No, you it's should not, not terrible. deflect. It's you should just, not be deflecting and saying what someone else does when I, you, you have know, a problem Don, in your own house. Go Don, ahead. Go ahead. I, I don't deflect. I, I have been excoriating uh, much of Donald Trump's words, and you know that on your show and elsewhere. I am very consistent. I wish he were not the nominee. He is. He is the only obstacle to four more years of, of, of the Democrats' damage to our economy, our society, our education. That's, that's, uh, so I, I understand that. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that if racism is going to be the issue, the left has no leg to stand on. That was my but only it, point. And I want to clearly make the point now that Donald Trump is not a racist because the co-panelist just said no one will answer that question. Well, I will. If Donald Trump were a racist and he had a problem with this judge simply because of his heritage, 
then why, I want to pose the question to you, and I hope you won't deflect, why then did he not have a problem with this judge two years ago when he was uh, appointed to the case? Why did he not say just then, sorry, this guy's of Mexican heritage, I can't have him? He wasn't running for president. Because he wasn't running for president of the United States. He's not he's making a judicial argument. He's making a political argument. He's playing on the worst fears no. of Americans by tearing people down. And it's why a Republican senator from Illinois withdrew his endorsement of Donald Trump and said, he was too racist. I'm out of time, guys. Thank you. So, uh, I appreciate Dennis. I, I love you for coming on. Please come back. I love all of your candor. Thank you, Kaylee. Thank you, Eli. Thank you, Guy. We'll continue this conversation. We have five more months to do it.